So in this video I want to show you how you can create this kind of pad sound that you heard in the intro and possibly are still hearing in the background of me speaking, which is some orchestral type brass pad sound really inspired by the sound of FM synthesizers such as the Yamaha DX7. I was using Ableton Live's operator synth, but you'll be able to transfer those settings to any other synth that is capable of doing some FM synthesis. Also, let me quickly say hi, my name is Janis and I make tutorials about music production and performance. And in case you'll enjoy this video, you can already keep in mind that you will find more videos like this on my channel. So the first thing to check with any kind of FM synthesizer is the routing and you can do it by clicking here on the lower right corner this section and here you see different types of routings and what this means is that the lowest color you see so in this case a most of the time is the oscillator you can hear and everything that is above is modulating this oscillator so in those cases you see you will always only hear a while B, C and D are modulating but still doing this in different orders. And for this particular sound I picked this whole square thing so that we have two sounding oscillators that both have one independent modulator. So we hear A and A is modulated by B as you can see with the color. And also if we activate C and D you should actually see the colors. And we hear C, which then again is modulated by D. That's basically how it works. What I also like to do in the beginning is the spread because it makes your sound a little more stereo. And apart from that, you see that I have some modulations here for the velocity. And I'm gonna speak about them also in a second because I want to focus on the first oscillator first, which is A. So we're hearing A and if we deactivate B, all we hear is actually this A oscillator, which is a sine wave with just a longish release. Actually, the decay is one second, but doesn't matter because the sustain is just all the way up. Just some two milliseconds small attack and then it sounds like this. Actually, it still sounds kind of beautiful. It sounds less harsh than the initial sine wave because we have a little stereo spread. Uh, we have the tone making it a little more mellow. And also, if you put the attack to some little longer value than in the beginning, you reduce this kind of initial hit because if it's at zero, you always get the in the beginning. And like this is just a bit smoother without sounding too long. And also we need this in order to imitate this kind of brass type attack, which we need the second oscillator for. And oh, you can actually see I'm at course 0.5. It's just because I realized I'm not in the octave I want it to be in. So for the course, it's just a matter of um, how it relates to your tone. So you can have a super low tone in your MIDI file and then you can put the course to a higher value. So it again, sounds the same. So it's basically like some transpose button. And um, so you see, because those later oscillators C and D are at one, it's just because they are supposed to be one octave higher. So it just has to be the double value, but I'll speak about it in a second. Let's focus on oscillator B because now it gets actually interesting because you can see that it has a longer attack and also some long decay and release and the sustain is at minus 12, which means that now with this shape, it's going to modulate the first oscillator. And also I applied feedback, which means that again, this oscillator is modulating with itself in a way that it creates some additional overtones that is really pleasant. Also sine wave in case I didn't mention it. And let's see what happens. Wow. That's actually quite some impact on the sound. I mean, we went from this to this. And this is really the beauty of the FM synthesis because, by the way, I also detuned it a little, but it's not the most important thing here. If you create those sounds, it's really about fine tuning those envelopes because everything you do here affects the sound. So if I make the attack shorter, you see. we lose the kind of brass type attack that I was mentioning. Or if we make the decay very short, it's going to go down after this initial hit very quickly. Ooh. Sounds a bit awkward. 
That's why I put it long, I think. Because here it sounds really beautiful. And also the sustain kind of has an impact on how bright the sound stays. Because here it goes down way more, so we also have a duller sound in the end. And it's all about fine-tuning those, also in terms of how much amount you add here. You see, there's less amount and I was really happy with it. I have to not mess with it because I'm happy with the way it sounds right now. And it can take you a while. I was also taking a while to actually figure out where it sounds the best, but there's always this nice point where it makes sense to your ears and to the music. So you have to be open for dragging those things around. But this is really the most important section for now to just focus on the relation between the oscillators and drawing those nice modulation shapes. And now I want to mention those modulations. I already mentioned a few seconds ago that the velocity has some impact on volume B here and volume D. So the volume of oscillator B and the volume of oscillator D. And this is a super great way of adding some type of organic velocity response to your playing. Because if I deactivate it and now I'm going to head over to the piano. Now we have velocity response. But the sound always sounds kind of the same because we have the same type of distortion. But if we say that this actually has some impact on the modulator's velocity, then it means the louder we play, the more this modulation oscillator actually impacts our first oscillator. So it means if we pay, play softer, we have less of the distortion, so it sounds a bit more mellow. But then if we play louder, it becomes really bright. So that's actually super cool. And I really enjoy doing this with FM synthesizers. You can also apply this to the keyboard tracking, which is also cool, although you can only do it for one of them, but it's already enough for also adding some additional response because I'm always looking for organic response to the playing. and. If it's just the volume, like the amplitude envelope, I always feel quickly awkward with synthesizer sounds. So I much prefer to find responses to the playing, either in the frequency of the notes, so lower notes have less filter or maybe overtones. And also by playing softer or louder, that if I play softer, they have less overtones. If I play louder, they have more overtones. So now I can see that if I play a low note, it sounds really soft compared to a higher note. You can see the difference if the keyboard tracking is disabled. I still have more of it. So this is something where you can really fine tune the response to whatever feels good for your playing. And I can really recommend this, especially for the pad sounds to prevent making them sound too stiff. I'll just leave it off for now because I'll stick to the sound that I created before. And we can look at those next oscillators. So you see the chorus is double amount of this one. And I wasn't really precise in the beginning because it's basically some overtone thing that in the beginning, if you're at 0 0.5, 1 and 2, you have octaves. But later, if you arrive at higher points, it's not just octaves anymore, so I wasn't really precise here, so please forget what I was saying a few minutes ago. But here it's making sure that we have just one octave higher. And so by itself, this C oscillator sounds like this. And again, we want to modulate it, so we have a D oscillator. This kind of envelope is similar to the A, but a little quicker even. And I think the D is probably similar to the B, it's almost the same, but again, a little different. And that's also something I enjoy with those FM synthesizers, to not have the exact same envelope, but to make them different. So you bring out the timbres a little more, especially here, I feel like it makes the sound a bit more orchestral because also if you have some real musicians, they won't play all exactly in the same way. So for this type of pad, it can make sense to try it out. Sometimes we want to have it as snappy as possible. But let's see how the D oscillator affects the C oscillator now. Ha. Huh. Again, it's using the feedback. And also the sine waves don't really sound like sine waves anymore. And together with the rest, we actually have this super, super full sounding pad. Mm.
And I like about it that it doesn't, I mean, it is brass inspired, but it doesn't sound like some bad copy of a brass sound. And that's something that is always really important to me when trying to make synthesizer sounds that they are inspired by something, but not trying to copy something. Uh, just a personal thing, but that's always where I, um, like if I feel like, okay, now it starts sounding like a bad copy, I won't follow this path. By the way, if you connect to my content or just the way I speak about music or creating those sounds, be known that I have a profile on Skillshare where you can find some more in-depth classes about different subjects in music production. So for example, about music theory, but in a very practical way. So if you want to come up with more interesting chord progressions or melodies, also about limitation in music, how you can become more productive, also about just making your music rhythmically more exciting. And there's a link down below in the description with which you can register one month for free to just find out if it's for you. And yeah, so if you like this content, warm invitation to check this out. But let's follow now the remaining settings of this synth. So I applied some LFO just to the overall frequency to add a tiny vibrato. Makes it sound kind of dramatic. It might be too much already, but I'm gonna leave it this way. I also kind of enjoy it. And also you have a filter, which is great because this is very nice about operator that it gives you the chance to combine the FM synth still with a filter. So you have kind of all in one type synthesizer. And I use the 12 dB per octave setting. The 24 one is often too strong for my taste. And the frequency is down to 160, a little bit of resonance. I always like to add a little bit of the filter drive. Sometimes it doesn't work, but here it was fine. It's very subtle. And also here you see that the drive is at one, around one. And then just some slowish attack. So it doesn't come immediately, but it's also not too slow. The decay is kind of similar to C and A and also the release and the sustain kind of low. So we just give some additional shaping to the sound. Let's see what happens. So we bring the sound down to a mellow state in case of leaving it as bright as here, which is also fine. But here we point out the attack a little more because we could also fine tune those, but I was happy with those settings here. So it's nice that if you found a nice relationship between the oscillators or the modulators, carriers, whatever, um, then it's nice to leave it them that way and have some additional filter to just shape the sound. And I mean, there are always different ways to get to the same kind of end result, but this is just what I enjoy adding the filter after fine tuning those oscillators. And you have to make sure that the filter envelope is also applied. Otherwise you just dull out the sound because it's always at 161. And just one thing to make sure. But I want to show you my other version with the longer attack, which is basically, I think, almost the same sound. But I think here the filter is actually clean. I don't know if it, it, it won't affect the sound too much. I just want to show you how it sounds like with the long attack, because here you see that this modulator B has a six second attack. The rest is kind of similar as before. And also here the D has it. So it has some long sweep in the beginning and it sounds really beautiful. I like it almost more than the one I showed you, but it's always depending on the situation. And apart from that, you can do all the same settings I just did. You just have to make the attack slower. And that was it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in more tutorials about making sounds inside Ableton Live, there's a playlist that I link here. Again, if you're new to this channel and like this content, be warmly invited to subscribe, which you can do here on the other side. And apart from that, I just wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and really hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.